So we've got revision of energy transfer by heating. We're just going to do a quick overview of the different methods of energy transfer um, and then talk about some other bits from the topic. So one of the ways that we can transfer energy by heating is through conduction. And conduction is where you have particles that are touching and they can bash into each other. So if I applied some heat and then this particle would start vibrating, which would bash into this particle, which would bash into this particle, and so on and so on, until the energy is transferred down the substance. So therefore, it happens in solids, uh, which that happens best in solids. It does happen in liquids to a certain extent, doesn't really happen in gases, because those particles don't really touch each other because they're so far apart. So the vibrations are passed along and best in solids, like I say, because they are touching. So we also have convection. And this happens best in fluids. Um, and that's because they can flow. So fluids being... Um, gases and liquids and this was uh, so in general this is when the particles uh, heat up they become less dense and so they rise and then they get displaced so they rise up if, so if the heat source is here they rise up once they're away from the heat source they'll start to cool down but they have to they get moved out of the way because there's this constant current that gets started up so it would happen in both directions i've just drawn one side so we have this current that gets set up and then we also have radiation so radiation um, is a wave So it's electromagnetic radiation, uh, infrared, and the special thing about radiation compared to convection and conduction. Conduction and convection require particles. Radiation can travel through a vacuum. Okay, so it doesn't need particles in order to transfer energy by radiation. So one of the other things that you need to know about in this topic is the idea of thermal conductivity. And this is a property of a material. So it is the ability to conduct heat. So a measurement of the ability to conduct heat. So if it has a high thermal conductivity then that means it conducts very well. Whereas if it has a low thermal conductivity, it doesn't conduct well. And sometimes you might hear materials that have a low thermal conductivity being referred to as insulators. Okay, so something is an insulator when it has a low thermal conductivity. So what you could think about is, or where this becomes relevant, is choosing materials. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is they might give you an example of a saucepan and they might say to you, what is a saucepan made out of and why? So this is the pan and it would be made of metal. And then you would say that metal has a high thermal conductivity. And the reason you want something that's got high thermal conductivity is so that when you apply heat to the bottom of the pan, it transfers that heat really well to the food or the water or whatever you've got in your pan. And then the handle, you would want to be made out of plastic. And plastic has a low thermal conductivity, it's an insulator. And the reason you want your handle to be made out of plastic is so that you don't burn your hand, so that you don't conduct all of that heat from this metal through to where your hand would go. So these, they could ask you questions about choosing a material. Also, um, you sometimes do get asked questions about choosing a material in the context of insulation um, in terms of 
a house. Um, so they could ask you about how houses are insulated. Um, and uh, so it's all about he reducing heat loss. So you're thinking about how are you going to reduce conduction? How would you reduce convection? How would you reduce radiation? So radiation is where you'd put um, like foil behind the radiators so that it reflects the wave back into, um, into the room. Um, convection is where you want to stop air from being able to flow around. So you want to trap the air in a space. So this is where you have things like a foam. Um, so a foam uh, has lots of air pockets, so it traps the air in that space. So by it having lots of air, by having the air, you're reducing conduction because you've got a gas instead of a solid. And so therefore it's going to reduce conduction because gases don't conduct very well. Um, if at all. And then by trapping the air, you're reducing convection because rather than the air then being able to move up and out, you're stopping it and you're saying that it has to, well, it's, it's staying in, in one space. The other thing that comes up in this topic is it has a required practical. And I'm not gonna spend ages on this because there's a whole other video of just the RPA. Um, so, it, but it's, it's more just kind of doing a little recap. So the RPA is for specific heat capacity so how to find the specific heat capacity of a material usually um, a metal so first of all you need to know the definition of specific heat capacity and this is the energy required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. So you are expected to know this definition, particularly if you're on the higher paper. You get given the equation, so the change in energy, delta, this triangle means change, the change in energy is equal to the mass multiplied by the specific heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature, so delta theta. You get given this in, um, in words on the um, equation sheet as well. I've written in symbols because it's a very long equation to write out otherwise. So you get given this, you do not need to learn it off by heart. So to measure the specific heat capacity of something, we need the energy, we need the mass, and we need the change in temperature. Usually what happens is it's a metal block, and in the metal block are two holes. One usually has a heater, which is attached to a joule meter um, to measure the energy, and then attached to a power pack. And then in the other hole is usually a thermometer and that's to measure the temperature. So you'd put the heater on, you measure the change in temperature. Once the temperature is increased by 10 degrees, then you measure the energy on the joule meter and then you put the balance, uh, the block on a balance to measure its mass and then you plug your values in rearrange the equation and find C. There is a whole video on specific heat capacity, so I don't want to go into any more detail now. If you don't remember doing this RPA or you want a bit more time on that, then you can go away and look at that video.